Welcome, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Heather, and I'm on the marketing team at Eagle Eye Networks. Today's webinar is part of our three-part series titled Security Resilience, Thriving in an Unpredictable Atmosphere. And today's topic is the power of the open platform. Before we get started, the usual housekeeping. If you have any questions, please type them into the Zoom Q&A box at any time throughout the presentation, and we'll address them at the end of the webinar. This webinar is also being recorded and all registrants will receive a follow-up email with a link to the full recording after the webinar. Now I'll go ahead and introduce your speakers for today. Hans Kaler and Mark Harton will be our speakers. Hans Kaler is Vice President of Operations and Business Development at Eagle Eye. In this role, he's responsible for product management, strategic accounts, technology partnerships, and business development. He has been with Eagle Eye for over six years. Mark Cotton is our API evangelist since 2018, who works with our technology partners and is in charge of API integrations. They're here today to go more in depth on the topic. And with that, I'll hand it over to Hans. Thanks, Heather. Before I get started on this, I want to say one more thing about Mark. I like to brag on him a little bit. He has been our API guy since 2018, but he was also Eagle Eye employee number one and has been here longer than any of us. So uh, he, uh, he doesn't say that himself. So I had to say that for him. But uh, at any rate, so Eagle Eye Networks, I think most of you probably know this. I'll go through it pretty quickly. Uh, we're founded in 2012 by Dean Draco. His last company was Barracuda Networks. Uh, you guys might be familiar with that a little bit. We are currently, we believe, the number one uh, commercial cloud video surveillance company in the world. We have offices uh, all around. Our headquarters is in Austin, Texas, which is where we are based right now. Uh, we have, do also have an office in Tokyo and another one in Amsterdam. We have customers in about 80 countries. We currently have about 200 employees. Uh, so we also won a few awards. There's a couple different things here, some uh, in the different metrics here, but the one that I'm the most proud of is the one in the middle here, the Deloitte Fast 500. We, uh, last year, we were recognized as the 133rd fastest growing company in all of North America across any uh demographic, but also number one in video surveillance as far as uh, fastest growing. So with that kind of you know, marketing stuff out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and turn over to Mark for uh, what he can get you going on the tech stuff, which you really came for. So Mark, take it away. All right. Like we said, we're going to be talking today about the API. Um, API is an acronym for Application Programming Interface. Um, it's a big, scary sounding word, but it's actually pretty simple. An API is just a software intermediary that makes it possible for two separate pieces of software to interact and talk to each other. So using APIs, you can interface between backend systems and applications that can help you expand product functionality. These can be backend systems from different companies, um, adding a front end from another company, combining in the middle to do something. So it's really a way for these to plug together. We also say that we are an open API. Um, by being open, it's, you know, it makes us, you know, better. And one of the reasons why is that we allow the freedom to use the API for what makes sense for the vertical process that you're trying to build. Um, we do this so that it is out there for other people to expand and grow. So some examples of common APIs, um, that are in use that you know you may run into every day whether you know it or not um, would be things like Salesforce and Slack, um, ADP, TweetDeck, Twilio. We're using Zoom right now, QuickBook, and then my favorite example is Google Maps. I love using the example of Google Maps because it has become extremely common for every smartphone app and every website to have Google Maps embedded directly in it. And that is the quintessential use of an API, is to be able to take that little functionality from Google and embed it directly into your site or your app. Hey, Mark, one thing I want to throw in there. Can you go back real quick, one slide? Yep. The one I want to throw out here that I like, I know you like the Google Maps one, but I want to throw out Twilio. That's one that probably most people don't understand or haven't heard of. But what Twilio does is they figured out how to send text messages to people's phones really easily. And they figured out how to work with the different carriers out there, whether that's AT&T, Verizon, or Sprint. And across a, a, a global uh, perspective, 
And so we actually use Twilio uh, to send push notifications, but almost every app that you use, whether it's Uber or uh, when people used to fly and they'd get a confirmation that their gate has changed or something like that, all those apps are using Twilio and they're using the Twilio API so that each app developer doesn't have to figure out how to navigate the complex network that is you know, the US or global cellular network. So I think that's another good example of, a, uh, of an AP application API. Yes, it is. All right, so I was talking about the Eagle Eye Video API. Um, we are a comprehensive REST-based API for recording, indexing, and storing camera video. Our big claim to fame here is that we do all the heavy lifting. So we do the interfacing between the cameras and recording the video. We handle getting it securely transmitted up to the cloud and stored securely. Um, and we also make the video, video available to use in the integrated applications. As you may already know about Eagle Eye Networks, we support IP cameras, we support analog cameras, we support you know cameras over TVI, and by doing all of that, our API just treats them all as one single camera. So that that complexity of different manufacturers and different brands is all hidden away, and we just treat it as here you go, here's the video from this camera. So you know this is all sounds great, but why does this matter, right? The bottom line is if you think about the history of video surveillance, it wasn't too long ago, I guess it was quite a while ago, we were having VCRs, but then went to DVR and NVRs right away. Those are closed systems fairly, they're pretty much. You could do a little bit of stuff with IO ports, maybe flash a light or sound a buzzer, or those kinds of things. And a lot of people got really good at doing those kinds of things with IO ports either on the DVR itself or connect to the camera. But those are still pretty limited. You can't send a text message from there about an alert or you can't, uh, insert information or pull in information from other applications. So, uh, you know, when you look at the old systems that we're talking about, that it's difficult to do the data exchange. Even if you've got a more modern VMS that's on site, that's an enterprise system, it's run on Windows, so now you have to figure out the networking and how to connect that to, say, the access control system. And those are things some of us have done. And, it, and it's doable, but it's always challenging. So with a cloud experience, because we worry about getting all the network stuff done from the site up to the cloud and getting the video up there, then there's only one integration point and it makes the integration of whatever application you're trying to, to use, like let's say access control, very simply. So we'll use some examples down the road, uh, some specifics, but the short version is you don't have to wire the two applications together physically at all. They don't have to be on the same network. They just both have to be connected to the internet and the integration is done in the cloud. It's almost as simple, and actually is as simple, we'll use a social media example, if you wanna link your Facebook and your Instagram accounts. I don't know if that's, probably not this audience, but everyone knows what I'm talking about. You just go into one app or the other and connect them. That's very similar to how things are done when you have an integration with Eagle Eye. So what this allows you to do is to develop stuff faster, so that lowers the total cost of ownership because you don't have to worry about all the specifics of each spot. Uh, we've got better increased cybersecurity and we've got a whole white paper on cybersecurity and we've got some webinars on it. So I'm not gonna go into it here, uh, all the details of it, but a couple of quick bullet points. Because we've got people watching these applications all the time and if there is a vulnerability found, we can patch them very quickly. That's one of the reasons why we have enhanced cybersecurity over other systems that are connected to the internet that maybe aren't managed, so that'd be that NVR or that enterprise VMS that's just connected to the internet. Uh, and now you, you know, somebody has to, to manage it. Those can be made cyber secure, but somebody has to do it with Eagle Eye, we're doing it. Uh, also, with uh, the ability to get all the video centrally, you're future-proofing uh, this integration because now uh, we have an, a, and Mark can talk about this a little bit better, but we basically view our API as a contract with the user that is, this is what we support and it's not gonna change. So we might add new features down the road that you might wanna integrate with, but we're never going to change what we are already uh, providing. Mark, do you wanna elaborate on that at all? Yeah, definitely. So right now we are using the version one of our API. Um, we have started to roll out some additional functionality in a version two, 
but we're rolling this out in parallel. So version one is still maintained and supported and stable so that applications built with that will continue to work and newer applications built with version two will get that new functionality. So existing installations that you have or existing integrations that you've set up won't just suddenly break when we switch our API functionality. All right. Thanks, Mark. Perfect. Um, all right, so now we're gonna talk about some examples of custom solutions built with the Eagle Eye Video API platform. There's an even wider spectrum than these, but here are some that we chose to highlight. Um, access control intr intrusion platforms, uh, enterprise and analytic solutions, point of sale applications, medical facility integrations, video alarm monitoring, um, franchise operations management, fleet management, virtual doorbell services, um, environmental sensors, and other type of sensors, warehouse and robotic applications, and then citywide surveillance. So right. these are all oh, classes. Sorry, keep, keep going. These are, these are all broad classes. This is not the complete list of what we do. Um, we are working with people who, you know, may choose to do something specifically for education. Um, and so just because education isn't on this slide, mm, sorry, does not, does not mean that it can't be done. It just means there's only so much room on the slide for us to put it here. And a couple of things that I want to point out too, that one of the things that we're seeing that occurs because the video is a little more usable than maybe being in a, stuck in an enterprise VMS or on an NVR, you can you access easily via remote apps or I'm sorry, web apps. You can get remote access with either the web or mobile apps. Geez, I need another cup of coffee. But now you can find new uses for it. So one of my favorite ones is the franchise operations management that is on the top of the right column. Uh, this is nothing to do with security at all. Now you're using the same system for security, make sure that people aren't stealing or slips and falls and fraud. But now that have integrated uh, systems to say, hey, are the shelves stocked? Uh, or in, uh, I can't say the name, but you guys probably figure out if you go pick up a pizza and you, know, you order a pizza, you go pick it up instead of having it delivered, you can also get drinks that are there. You know, get some Mountain Dew or Coke or whatever it is in the walking or the cooler right there when you walk in. Well, if that's empty, then you're not going to be selling any sodas. So you can actually have operations management systems take a snapshot of the cooler every so often and someone can review that snapshot to see if it's full or not, and then they can make a decision. And these applications that have been integrated can actually uh, push that snapshot to a manager. A manager can say, looks good or looks bad. And if it looks bad, it'll alert the employee to go and uh, you know, fill the cooler in this example. So uh, it basically what some of these APIs do, obviously access control and intrusion relates directly to security. And so do maybe some of the analytics. But if you look at a lot of these, it's really expanding the market for what uh, video surveillance can do. Perfect, thank you, Hans. Um, I wanted to go and there's a couple partners that we wanted to highlight. Um, we work with you know, the best partners in the security industry. We're, opening, we're open to work with even more. This is just a sample that we put together. Um, and we're gonna be highlighting three or four of these to talk about. If there's a specific case uh, or a specific question, definitely ask us in the Q&A and we can get to that at the end. Um, so the first one I wanted to highlight is Brevo. Brevo is a cloud-based physical access control system. Um, so they manage the card readers and badges and who can come in and what pin code they can use and what schedule. Um, and this is a natural complement to have video of those events. So if you have someone trying to use a card that's been rejected, um, in the traditional system, you would just know that there was a card read and it was rejected you know, several times. In this case, you can actually pull up the video directly from the camera um, and correlate those events. And so this is a case where it is very natural to have the video pulled into another platform. Um, Brevo does a terrific job with this. We love, you know, we love this example because it is a good fit. Um, but there's so many things that can be added.
by being able to see something in addition to the data presented by it. Another case of this is Swift sensors and Eagle Eye Networks. Swift sensor shows real-time data and historic data of sensor readings and they put the video on top of it. So this could be something like motion detected in the lobby, like we're showing here. It could also be the temperature of the walk-in freezer at a restaurant where for compliance reasons, that temperature needs to stay below a certain level. And if someone leaves the door open, obviously that temperature would go up. Um, and by having the video, you can get the alert, you can see what's going on. You can see if it's just that the door needs to be closed or if the, you know, if the uh, walk-in coolers malfunction in some way and send out repair. So once again, having the complement of visually being able to see it and the data um, is a great combination between the two. DMP, uh, they are a commercial alarm system where they do light and mid and enterprise. Um, they've integrated our video into their virtual keypad application. This allows uh, the user who's using the same application to verify the alarms on their mobile app to also to be able to see video from it directly. And because they've integrated through the cloud with us using our API, there's nothing more to go back and install. It's as simple as the DMP customer says, I would like this, and they click a checkbox, and now the two can talk to each other. So no additional hardware on site, no additional wires to connect or plug in. Um, and that's a real good point, Mark. So just can you go back to the DMP thing for just a second? So we released the DMP integration, or the DMP integration was released, I don't know, call it in the fall. It doesn't matter exactly, but say September of last year, maybe a little before that. But let's say there was a customer that already had DMP, that already had Eagle Eye, that they installed it, I don't know, before the integration was done. What's really cool is that because these are both remotely accessible applications, there's nobody had to go on site to perform the integration task. DMP was installed and working fine. Eagle Eye was installed and working fine. It's logged into the applications and configured it. And the same goes for Brevo. So uh, it's really uh, useful uh, or, or very simple to get this thing done. And again, without having to go on site. Yeah. Now, Percolata is the next one I wanted to highlight. Um, they're slightly different than the traditional security and um, access control integrations. They are doing uh, machine learning to do predictive analytics on shopper forecast and uh, compliance with occupancy sensing rules, um, social distancing between shoppers, the effectiveness of how well your salespeople are doing and actually selling based on how much traffic is coming in. So they are doing all of this analytic in the cloud off the video. And we kind of have a funny story with them of the integration between Eagle Eye Networks and Percolata came because a customer had 42 store locations. They had selected Eagle Eye as the video platform. And then independently, they had selected Percolata as the best for doing these business analytics for them. Um, so we got pulled in together on this one project with 42 locations. And once we started the conversation of here's how they can get our video from the cloud, they don't need to connect directly to each of those 42 sites. You know, then we fell in love with each other. Um, and so now they are a great partner that we're able to, in, we're able to share with everyone. And so the great benefits they have is they're able to do their machine learning magic on the cameras that are already installed in the store for security. They're able to make that data smarter and better. Um, they're able to do it completely through the cloud, so nothing else to install. And it's just one more example of security cameras and security video being able to be extended to be smarter and to do more um, because of the API. Whoops, I was on mute. So uh, we're gonna do a few uh, more things here then we'll hit the Q&A. But uh, here's a few more things to think about why Eagle Eye and how you can implement with these other uh, applications. So uh, we support a wide range of cameras. Uh, IP cameras, of course, we use OnViv Profile S, but analog cameras, even TVI cameras. So we can connect in to, their, to a customer's existing camera network or they don't have cameras or want to update them, 
we can work with most likely the cameras you already prefer to sell, Hanwha, Axis, Hike Vision, Dawa, Bosch, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And then we got a full list on our website you can check out and see if we support the cameras that, that you like. Uh, also, in addition to the integration that we've talked about here, or integration with other applications, we also have uh, analytics. So analytics that run either on the bridge or in the cloud. And that would be things like, for example, uh, you know, real simple example is line crossing. We can get more comp uh, complicated and there's some questions in the chat about, uh, about analytics. But what happens is, is that then with these analytics, they can work across different kinds of cameras, even analog cameras in some cases. Obviously, when we're talking about analytics, you still have to be concerned about the field of view and the lighting and, and those types of things. But um, we can do stuff like line crossing. And there's another example of, uh, I don't think we covered it, but we had a customer that uh, was a, is a jewelry store chain. And in their world, they don't know necessarily how many people to schedule to work at the jewelry store. So you know, in some other businesses, they can just easily see transaction data on their point of sale system and know how many customers were in the store. For example, grocery stores, convenience stores, uh, these are places where people usually don't come in to browse around. And so usually if you walk in the store, you buy something. And so just looking at the point of sale system, the management team can know how many people were in the store. Well, the jewelry store is the exact opposite. A lot of people come in and look around and don't buy anything, but they still need to be helped. They still need to be attended to. They still need to be shown rings, bracelets, earrings, whatever it is. And so one of the problems the jewelry store chain said is, hey, we don't really know how busy our stores are. Can you help us out? And so we used our line crossing analytic and we used that, the data out of that to feed into their scheduling system. So of course they used their point of sale data, but they also used the line crossing as people were coming in the door. Now this was on systems they already had installed uh, that we did have to reposition the camera a little bit to get in some cases, or we didn't do it, our integrator did it. But the bottom line is that they use the existing system to help with staffing. And then here's another thing that was really interesting, that once the operations team heard about that, saying, oh, well, we're seeing how many people are walking in, then the marketing team said, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. We can start to see how good our ads are in certain areas by running ads and then comparing the foot traffic that came in the store versus the week before or the season before, compare ads and year over year foot traffic. Because again, the marketing team doesn't necessarily get measured on sales, they get measured on how many people come in the store. And then it's up to the sales associates that are there to, to actually sell the, the jewelry. So again, same security system, obviously all jewelry stores have video surveillance systems, or they should, but now they're using it not only for video surveillance for the security of the store and theft, but for the operations of scheduling staff, as well as the marketing team using it to, as one of the metrics to help evaluate the effectiveness uh, of their advertising campaigns. We spend a lot of time talking about the API. There's obviously that's what this whole presentation is about. And there's a lot of ways that people can use the API that they never even thought of beforehand. Uh, Mark went through some of the examples, but like I mentioned with that jewelry store, they didn't buy the platform for scheduling their staff or for uh, you know, testing effectiveness of the marketing campaign. But guess what? Now that we're in those other two departments of the organization, that just makes our relationship with that customer that much more sticky as well as our dealer's relationship with that customer more sticky it's more than just a security solution at that point point. and the last thing i want to touch on here is cybersecurity. there's a lot of things and like i said earlier we have uh white papers on this so i won't beat it up too bad but one of the big things that at least a lot of the security integrators i talk to when the it department of the end user gets brought in the security guys tend to be a little nervous because IT departments generally don't like video surveillance for a lot of reasons. The bandwidth load that it puts on the network and is one thing, but also usually a lot of cybersecurity risks. I'm not saying we win every deal where IT is involved because we certainly don't, but we are certainly not afraid of the IT guys either. The IT team, IT guys really like our approach, the way we manage the network, the way we manage the bandwidth, et cetera. So with that, let me, uh, uh, stop for a moment and Heather are there any uh, questions that we need to answer here absolutely and thank you both already we'll go ahead and transition to Q&A now 
If you and the audience have any more questions, please type them in the Q&A box. I'll start with the first few that have come through. Uh, one is, what else can I as a user do with the API? Okay, um, Mark, do you want to take that or you want me to? Uh, let me let me take a stab at it. Sure. Um, so as my job as API evangelist, I would like the first thing for you to do is reach out to me. Um, you can reach out to me at mcotton at en.com. And so if you have a question or you have something you want to do, definitely reach out and let's talk through it. Um, this can be as simple as, hey, I have, you know, I want to generate a time lapse for my camera because there's an interesting construction project being, you know, going on and I want to see how to take an image of it every hour for the next year and put it all together as a video. So that's an application we've helped put together. Um, I want to be able to determine, you know, how many boats are coming to, you know, this commercial slip and so I can tell how effective, you know, my, you know, my people are doing this. So custom boat analytics, um, right? These are, these are things that if they're interesting to you, if they're things you need to do, definitely reach out to me. Um, my whole job is to help with this. And so the, the question really comes down to uh, what can you do as an end user? It's what problem are you trying to solve? Um, and if you can solve that problem by doing something with video, then, you know, we are, we're here to help. Yeah, a couple of things I'll add on to that. It, the, the, you know, Mark did a couple of great examples, and there's pretty straightforward uh, examples there. And we have code on our website that uh, is sample code that you can download, and it's, there's several different languages. Uh, there's a couple of commercial things. There's no additional charge for the API. So if you're already an Eagle Eye customer and you want to do some API stuff, no additional charge. Just, you know, like Mark said, contact him, look at the sample code. Look at some of the examples we've got. You can just start using it. Uh, there's authentication and stuff that has to happen, but we explain how to do that. The other thing is, is that anything you see in our user interface, whether it's web or mobile, can is addressable in the API because we use our own API. We don't uh, have any uh, special secrets uh, that aren't, aren't out there for the public. So if you want to, for example, have a simple way of turning cameras on and off, we did a project uh, with somebody. This is someone with high-end residential. We're not normally in the residential space. This is someone with three or four houses and uh, 20, 30 cameras per house. So you can imagine a big house. And their problem was that they didn't want cameras on while they were home. They wanted the cameras on while they're gone and at their other houses. But when they're at one house, they want to turn them all off. And so we did some stuff with them where they can uh, easily do that without having to you know, log in and on their app and anyway i'm getting a little too in the weeds here and i don't know what they do while they're home that they don't want the recording but uh at any rate those are just some simple simple examples as end users a couple more complex examples are embedding video in custom applications so we've got customers that embed video into they pull video from eagle eye and put it in their own dashboards uh, for their own operation systems, their own uh, customer, their CRM systems. Uh, they might pull in based on a transaction of some kind. We've got some enterprise customers that do, uh, uh, they're signing contracts and recording our, the contract signing with video. And then they're linking that chunk of video into their internal customer management system so that all they have to do is click a link and see the video of the contract being signed. Uh, by the way, they're storing that video five years, just in case they never need to go back and see what was said uh, during the contract signing because they're recording the audio and video. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that can be done there. Heather, are there any other questions? Yes, we have a few more. So Richard asks, is there a standards body or industry association focused on integrating various interoperability specs for security applications? That's a big question. Uh, there's a couple of standards bodies out there. Uh, one of them is OnVIF. Now, OnVIF is really focused on the communication from the camera to the recorder, so I don't think that really applies. There's another one called the PSIA, uh, Physical Security Interoperability Alliance. Uh, that one, I haven't kept up with all the details, but they tend to talk more on application to application interoperability, but most of those are focused on enterprise applications that are installed on site and not necessarily internet connected applications. And uh, I'm not going to say I'm an expert at this, but my memory, if memory serves, a lot of the protocols they use don't necessarily translate to cloud. 
But uh, those are the two organizations that I'm aware of, uh, but there's probably more out there. Yeah, I want to I want to add to that if I can. Sure. Um, so this is this is where our philosophy of an open platform is so important. Because we're open, we are using common video formats. We're using common video standards. Um, when we integrate, we're using REST-based APIs. We're using standard HTTP status codes. We're using the JSON da you know, data format to pass things back and forth. Part of us being an open platform is the fact that we are doing this in very open ways. So it's not proprietary lockdown. You don't need our special ActiveX plugin to do something. Um, so philosophically, us being open helps facilitate this the best we can. And that, that extends throughout our whole culture of we want to be as open and available to work with as many cameras and as many people as we can. Um, and so that's, that's a little bit behind our thinking. All right, thanks. Uh, another question here is, do you have OCR for car registration? So I think that means like for license plate registration or, li or license plate reading, uh, we are working on a couple of projects. This is less a, of, but oftentimes, I guess it could go either way. Uh, there's a couple of different ways we can do license plate recognition. So we can work with a platform that does it already and link the two similar to how access control or like we said the DMP or the Brevo integration was working where there's an existing license plate recognition system running and we link the two together. That's something that we've done uh, in a couple of examples. Where there, the other thing we can do, and then Mark's gonna correct any errors that I'm making here, is we can also look to get a feed from those applications. Now this isn't available yet, but we're working on it in, with one customer in, in, in a prototype here, where we're actually getting the feed from the camera and storing it in our system and making it searchable in our system. That's not really using our API, that's more of a feature we've built. Uh, but it's not available yet. So as it, put, for, um, as it pertains to the API, we can connect to a couple of different systems, but we're working on integrating something into a native feature as well. Mark, did I butcher that horribly or what? Nope, that's, that's completely correct. Um, I do want to also add that I have an example video um, up on EEN.cloud, which is a separate site that we run for API examples and code snippets that shows how to detect QR codes. Um, and so just extending, you know, this to what Hans was saying, detecting a text on a license plate through, you know, uh, through OCR is very similar in that process. And so fundamentally it follows the same way through, but I wanted to highlight this would also work for if you had an HOA that had stickers on everybody's car, you could detect that sticker or that barcode um, as some places do. So we already work with place, you know, with companies that do LPR. Um, we can get data from the camera directly as Hans was saying. And then we also have that example showing how we could get other information from it. All right, and uh, we'll take this last question here. In addition, in addition to social distancing algorithms, what are you seeing with integrations with thermal imaging cameras for temperature taking of people? Oh, wow. Uh, so there's a lot of different things with the, the thermal, uh, thermal cameras. And I guess now I have to put my legal hat on and you know, thermal cameras can't detect the fever. You know, they can't detect if anyone's sick, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, th there's a handful of things that we're seeing in use cases with the thermal cameras outside of the um, social distancing stuff. Actually, I have one on the side of my house and it, a crawfish boil looks really interesting on a thermal camera, by the way. But uh, and there's the traditional stuff where there's intrusion detection and perimeter, uh, you know, perimeter breach, those kinds of things. But uh, you know, there's the, um, as far as with people, there's, I don't know where it's going to go. There's a lot of flexibility or a lot of flux right now with what's happening with folks. There's starting to be the privacy concerns. We're starting to hear some countries talk about this and how long you can store the data and if you can display it or not. So I think it's going to take a while for things to shake out. There's a lot of people moving forward, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of unknown. So the bottom line is to answer that question. A lot of different things being discussed. Don't know where it's going to end up. 
I know that's kind of a lame answer and I apologize, but it's the best I know. I just don't know where it's going, but a lot of people are talking about a lot of different things. And if, you know, you've got the, uh, the link here, if we need to contact us or call in, again, I'm Hans Kaler. Whoever is asking that question wants to have a conversation about something specific, you can call in and get me or send the sales and they'll get it to me. But uh, it's just a lot of flux right now on that thermal camera stuff. Anything else, Heather? It looks like that's all we'll take for now. Okay. Uh, we didn't have any more questions come through, but if you do have any remaining questions we didn't get to answer, this is again our contact information. We're always available to help you. Feel free to give us a call, email, or also visit our website. We have a live chat there too. Make sure you check your email. Uh, we'll be sending out the recording with more information after this webinar. And that's all we have for today. Thank you, Hans and Mark, for presenting. Thanks everyone for joining.